Greetings gentlemen, ladies, old school GameStop here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a knockback effect uh, using uh, the general movement component plugin. Now this will probably work with the character creator, uh, sorry, character movement plugin. Uh, I'm just not exactly sure what the equivalent uh, variables are. They're gonna be very similar if that's what you're using. Uh, but uh, here's how we're looking. All right, so as you can see that little circle is the uh, basically the radius that I want for my explosion. It's not exactly tuned yet, but this is just for example so you guys can see what's going on. As you can see, the explosion hits and the actor gets bumped. The actor gets bumped in the uh, in some relevant location. This also applies to multiple actors. So if I put a, an explosion between these two, you would expect them to fly out and boom, that's exactly what they do. All right, so let's take a look at how to do this because this took me quite a bit of figuring. And uh, yeah, if you guys do not yet use, let's see here, if you don't yet use the general movement component, uh, component, uh, I highly recommend it. I've been using it for a while. I'm still learning. Oh, wait, where is it? I've been, I'm still losing, using a lot, uh, learning a lot about it. But basically what this bad boy does is it replicates all of your movement and it can be used for a variety of different types of movement swimming, walking, running, um, flying through the air, etc. And there's even some uh, additional plugins that have been developed for like ship ship piloting and stuff. Anyway, I've been using this one. Uh, I highly recommend it. The developer is an awesome guy. It's been very helpful. And uh, this was not released too long ago. But uh, anyway, so if you don't have this, uh, this tutorial will need some supplication. Uh, so for example, one of the things that we're using here is add a radial force. I'm pretty sure there's an equivalent of that in the uh, in the general uh, sorry in the um, add radial force in the in the uh, unreal uh, character movement. Um, but I, I'm not exactly sure. I think it might even be the exact same thing, add radial force and uh, set walkable floor angle and uh, some of these other things, right? Like this is, these are general movement component things, but a lot of what you f have in general movement component are kind of uh, what you also have in the, in the default Unreal character movement component. So uh, you'll, have to, you'll have to figure out what the equivalent is. I'm not sure. But let's take a look at this. All right, so this is a lot of basically uh, what I've got here is uh, kind of not that important. Uh, on hit, we want to get obviously the location of the projectile. All right, so I'm taking a look at my my projectile here, which is just this this little uh, this little disky thing, right? And so when that hits, event hit. Um, some of this doesn't matter. This is apply damage. This is play sound at location, spawn an emitter for an explosion. So if you guys want to know how to do that, you can obviously pause the video here and learn how to do that, but that's not specifically the point of this video. That stuff's pretty easy. Um, the tricky part <clears throat> was figuring out how to get a knockback effect on my pawns without enabling the uh, physics object, which was always causing the pawns to just fall over, right? <laughs> so, uh, but this uses the general movement components um, version of of, uh, of the uh, set radio, uh, add radial force it uses the general movement components uh, add radial force to uh, apply that movement without n enabling physics on the pawn in such a way that the pawn just falls over, right? So instead of going to your to your 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 uh, hero character movement character whatever, uh, instead of going to their their capsule and uh, P S Y H Y physics, uh, how do you, I can never spell physics. F F D H, no S Y, no H S, no God, how do you spell physics? I can never remember that one. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, but somewhere in here in the physics is the uh, basically uh, enable enable physics, right? So when you enable physics, and that's probably why you're watching this video, is because you've tried to do that, so you can create an explosion on your character, but you found your character just falls over, rolls around on the ground and becomes unusable, unmovable. All right, so this is how we actually get that nice knockback effect. I'll show you guys one more time. It's so fun. I'm so happy with it. <laughs> Boom. And uh, it's it's relevant, you know, it's relevant. If you hit the character on the top, well, I didn't get much that time. I think that's because some downward force is being applied in that case, right? So I've got that sort of force from a direction 
and it actually even applies to my own pawn character, of course. Uh, so, yeah, depending on which point that impact hits, it, it does its best job to simulate what would happen with the actor. Kind of accordingly, right? I may need to do some little bits of tweaking here still, but um, to get like a, that, you know, whatever sort of amount of physics reaction you, you want. I haven't perfectly tweaked that, but here's how to do it. All right, let's jump into this. Finally, after a bit of uh, rigmarole, um, here's what we're looking for. So, number one, we got our hit location right. I just put that into a variable from our hit location on event hit. That's one of the things we will need. The next thing we will need to do is run a sphere trace. This is going to get the different actors that are hit by the, uh, well, hit within a certain radius, right? So I set my radius to 500. I have my uh, actors to, uh, sorry, my um, object types to, in to include. And basically to, to use the object types to include, what you're going to want to do is just right click on object types, promote to a variable, compile your, your, um, compile your script, uh, and then here on the right, add a new variable type, click, and then find the pawn type. Or basically any type that you want to be affected. So say I want, I actually probably also want like a vehicle type to be affected, right? So now now this explosion will apply to these different collision uh, effects, right? This, this uh, multi-sphere line trace will impact those. And basically what we're doing here is we're using the multi-trace uh, as a sphere, right? As you saw there from from that uh, sort of spear shape, right? That's what that's what that is, it's that spear shape that we're creating. And I'm setting the radius to 500. Obviously I could make that smaller or bigger. Uh, I've also got my, my draw debug for duration so I can see exactly how big that is. And then what I'm saying basically from this is uh, drag off here. You're gonna wanna drag off here and go for each, grab a for each loop. Uh, and then you're going to, I think, need to break that for each loop. I'm pretty sure. Let me just do one for each loop. Yeah, so... Oh, no, I didn't do that. Did I do that? I don't know if I did that. For each... There you go. For each loop. Uh, you're going to want to right-click on the array... In, no, is it the array index? What was it? No, it was the array element. That's what it was. Array element. I just figured this all out, so I'm pretty stoked. That's what I do. When I figure out a new thing, I make a video about it. Number one, so you guys can see what it's all about. And if, you're ha if you're struggling from the same issue, you can, you know. Uh, but number two, for, for me to remember how to do it in the future when I forget. Um, print string doesn't matter. Uh, if you want to, you know, debug, debug your, your code, you can obviously just plug that in like that, right? And you can see which objects were actually hit. So I'll show you that really quick. As you can see, if I fire right there, you'll see in the top left, Hero 5 and Hero 4 were hit by that, but that's not really relevant. So at the moment, Destroy Actor is just destroying my projectile at this point, my little uh, energy disc. Uh, and then what I'm doing is I'm casting to my character class. Mine's called Hero, yours might be called uh, Default Mannequin or whatever, right? So I'm casting to that, uh, and I'm using the uh, element hit actor <clears throat> from the sphere trace as my object <clears throat> and then from here here is where I'm grabbing my general movement component and that was the plugin that I was talking about if you guys don't have the general movement component that won't work you'll need to you know get the character movement component I believe it's called I can't remember exactly character movement component uh, that now what I'm doing here is I'm setting the walkable floor angle to zero. Now basically what the, what this does, and there's a few ways to kind of get at this and create that knockback effect, right? What I'm doing with this is I'm basically saying that the ground angle of zero is no longer walkable. If it's no longer walkable, what happens? Well, the character's in the air. You can see how the character kind of bounces up and gets in the air like that. Uh, if I don't have that set ground walkable angle, it's kind of a different effect. Right, he kind of slides along the ground instead of bouncing up. And I like the bounce up effect better, but you can see how he slides, right? Without that bounce up effect. I tried uh, applying like some, some Z, Z axis force and stuff to get him to bounce up, but he just would not bounce up. And the way that I finally found to do that was to set the floor walkable angle. Again, general organic movement component, but there might be an equivalent of this in the character movement. There most probably is. Uh, to zero. That way, whatever surface he's on when he gets hit, uh, the the system basically assumes he's falling, and falling physics have a, sort of a different uh, friction level and basically different sort of interaction than 
than ground-based physics. So this just kind of works in a nutshell. It just kind of works. Uh, now what I'm doing is I'm adding a radial force. Again, you can probably find this in the character movement component. This is general mo targeting the gen movement component. And the way to, of course, grab these if you're new is to pull them off of your as hero in my case or as uh, third person mannequin or whatever it's called. And then, of course, you want to set the, the variables in there, right? Set walkable set walkable floor angle, right? Or, or, or add radial force. If you just try to pull these off with, uh, like for example, if you just try to pull these off, if um, you, you'll find that there, you won't you won't find what you're looking for, right? So what you need to do is you really need to pull a lot of things off, and this kind of screwed me around for a while before I finally figured out that you get different options when you pull out of different nodes, right? So making making sure that you're pulling out of your results from your cast to. Uh, and now I'm getting uh, basically the hit location. Oh, by the way, that reminds me in the in the uh, multi-line trace for objects the start and the end location are the same that makes it a sphere right that just makes it a sphere um, if I took that out you get kind of different results so I'll just show you quickly what happens there uh, with the sphere trace you can see what happens right so it's got the starting position where it hit and the end position is just zero I suppose zeroed out to infinity so all I'm doing here is I'm just saying the start and the end uh, of this sphere is the same, and the radius is basically what says how big it is. <clears throat> all right. So set walkable floor angle basically removes uh, the attachment to the floor, makes it so the character flies through the air, has kind of a nice knock back, knock back effect. And again, if you're using the general movement component, this is all replicated automatically, guys. Uh, so I, you know, hi highly recommend that as, as a movement plugin. It's just great. Um, it, it will save you some effort in getting this to be replicated if, if, you're, if that is your goal. All right, so I add a radial force. I've got 2,000 and 40,000. 2,000 radius, 40,000 for the strength. Now, I don't know if this actually aligns with what I have for... Uh, for the for the um, for the um, sphere trace, I have radius 500 over here. I have radius 2000 over here. I, I probably need to tweak these settings, right? But it, it doesn't really matter necessarily what I mean. It, it 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 may matter. I'm not exactly sure how radius plays in here. To be perfectly honest, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with uh, just like the strength of the explosion at differing distances. I think, but I'm not exactly sure. I'm not exactly sure because right now my sphere trace doesn't go as necessarily as far as my radial force trace. So again, I just kind of need to tweak these around and find the right distance and kind of figure all that out. Anyway, strength of 40,000. Uh, what you'll notice uh, sometimes if you don't put in a big enough strength, right? Let's even put in 4,000. You 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 basically kind of think it's just not working, right? Because there's going to be so little movement, and there's a, just enough in this case, but. Uh, Initially, what I was finding is that if I didn't have a large number in there, man, I just wasn't seeing anything happening, and I didn't think it was working. Also, uh, it seems like the falloff type of linear seems to work, and constant does not. Don't know why, but here's constant. Maybe it needs more strength, right? I don't know. I'm going to add <laughs> 10 more in here. Maybe it needs more strength. Yeah, or maybe not. I don't know. But what I do know is that the linear falloff type seems to work, and that's all I know. As for delta time, I don't even know what that does. I set it to two. It seems to seems to work. Um, and then what I've done here is I've set in a tiny delay, just a half second delay, to reset the walkable floor angle to 45 degrees, which is kind of my default walkable floor angle. That just means that the character isn't sliding on the ground. So for example, right, right, for example, let's say the character encounters a floor angle that isn't 45 degrees, right? Or is greater than 45 degrees. What happens? He stops walking. He falls right off, right? So if it's less than 45 degrees, he'll just keep walking right down it. Also, he can't walk up greater than 45 degree angle, right? So in a nutshell, basically, like I was telling you guys before, setting a ground to zero, zero degree walkable angle just puts him in into uh, uh, airborne mode, which seems to just have different physics than being on the ground in terms of uh, that knockback effect that we're looking for from the grenade, right? But what we'd want to do is reestablish uh, his ground walking physics, basically friction, or whatever it's called, uh, basically immediately after we apply the effect. So I've just got mine set to 40, uh, to, uh, to half a second after we reapply that 
a walkable floor angle. And that is basically it, guys. That's it in a nutshell. That's how to um, create a sort of uh, simulated impulse. Now, I still need to play around with the settings and get this all kind of working right. Uh, and what you'll notice is that there are different um, different sort of... Uh, well, let's say, for example, what did I notice? Different sort of configurations and settings have quite a bit different effects in terms of how the pawn is knocked back. That one didn't seem to have too much. I can't remember what I was playing around with before, but I think you guys get the general idea of how to do this. Hope that has helped somebody. Um, yeah, it took me quite a long time to figure out, just because, like I was saying, uh, you want to be able to affect multiple pawns, and you don't want to enable, you know, collision on your pawn. Um, yeah, because you guys are probably probably here for the same reason I am, right? Like, what happens when you enable... Uh, well, I'd, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember how to type it. That's just embarrassing. Anyway, when you enable physics on your pawn, they just fall right over, right? But you need to have physics on your pawn in order to add an impulse. Uh, but you, you know, can't add an impulse because your pawn falls right over. And so there's a lot of discussion on how to do this. I've noticed, and I didn't find a really uh, obvious answer, but for me this works. Again, general movement component, guys, that's what I'm using. You can probably do basically the same with the character movement component, but I haven't tested it, so I don't exactly know uh, if it has all of the same, uh, same, uh, same functions. Right? I don't know for sure, but probably. Uh, anyways, um, that's it. See you guys later. All right.